Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Really Mangles. We have here Cameron from Brunswick Aces, and Cameron's going to take you through our demonstration today. So please enjoy. All right. Well, it's a it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much, Kamal, and um, to be uh, supported by the guys at We Mangles. Uh, we've got a bit of a relationship with them recently, um, so it's good to actually be here doing something with the team, which is great. Uh, as Kamal said, my name is Cam. I'm one of the co-founders of Brunswick Aces. So we started the company in 2017, uh, five friends in a basic little garage in Brunswick. So we, uh, we got together with a couple of neighbours in ours, and we started messing around with uh, brewing our own beer, making some of our own gin, just small scale stuff in the, in the, in the back kitchen, I should say. Uh, and then we had one of our friends who wasn't drinking. So he was running marathons because apparently that's sometimes some people are for fun. Uh, and his partner wasn't drinking because they were trying to have a baby. So immediately there was this separation of our group. So the two weren't uh, interacting with us and engaging with us for our little tasting nights where we were testing our beers and our gins that we had. So we immediately noticed this schism between the five of us. And so we didn't really like that because we, we became really close and we bonded over sharing food and sharing drink. So myself um, and the rest of the crew, we started to mess around with uh, seeing if we could do what we were doing with the beer and the gin, but instead of having alcohol, see if we could try to replicate some of the processes without alcohol. So myself and uh, my business partner, Steve, we made a little bit of a still. Um, and then we had a bash at trying to make gin without alcohol. So we had a few attempts and it wasn't amazing. Then we, we persisted and persisted. And eventually we started to be able to pull out some of the main flavors that you could get with gin. So gin is primarily made up of juniper. So the main flavor in gin is juniper. And then aside from that, you can basically do whatever you want with it. It can have elderflower, it can have lime, it can have wattle seed, it can have lemon myrtle, anything you like, any botanicals that you want to impart flavor and taste to your gin. So it's a really good medium of expression. So we started playing around with our little effort of non-alcoholic gin, um, and we thought we were geniuses, to be honest, when we actually started to get something to work. Uh, but there was a company at that point uh, named Seedlip in the UK, and they were making non-alcoholic gin as well. And so we thought, this is actually something here. It's, it's a product and it's actually been released and maybe this is of interest. So we pursued it further. Um, so we got our hats together and we formed this little company called Brunswick Aces. So Aces is all crazy Egypts. It's not necessarily a card thing, but we've kind of <laughs> lent into the card thing as we go. Uh, so we started the company with just the five of us in our little garages. Um, and now we have, now we were the first non alcoholic distillery in Australia. And happy to say there's about 15 to 12 others now. So it's a really, it's a, it's a big industry now. A lot more people are interested in the non-alcoholic non space. And for us, that kind of comes down to, to the main reason, or two main reasons is one, flavor, as well as people's uh, perception. So non-alcoholic wine has been around since I was a kid. It's not necessarily a new idea. What is new is, is the shift towards attitudes to drinking. It's not necessarily a case where drinking rates are going down. We have circumstances in anyone's life where for whatever reason, you're not necessarily drinking all the time. So there is a gap there. So there's an idea that we wanted to fill that space with something to have when you weren't drinking. Now, the downside to a lot of non-alcoholic products in the past have been a lack of flavor. And so for us, we wanted to build something where flavor was paramount, flavor was key, to hopefully build a product that we could layer into cocktails and actually be a worthwhile mixer um, and in, in the place of gin. So for us, we have our non-alcoholic gin, which we call a sapir. So we've created a new terminology for it because we don't want to have a product that's lacking. We call it a non-alcoholic gin or a gin without the alcohol. Automatically, people feel like they're getting something taken out of it. So we wanted to actually build something that gave an increase in flavor, gave you that, that lovely same aromatic profile as you get from a regular gin just without the alcohol. So we have a distillery up in Brunswick. So we, have, we operate as a bar on Friday and Saturday nights, but we operate as a distillery Monday through the Sunday. We also stock, including our non-alcoholic gin, we stock non-alcoholic beer, 
wine and other spirits because we really want to champion this idea that you don't have to have alcohol and still lack a quality product. So for us, it's about flavor. It's a full cocktail bar. And so you can get some of the cocktails that you'll taste today are on the menu and some have been um, made specifically for We Made This Open Day. So what I wanted to do was to be as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions, feel free to put your hand up and we'll go through them. But today I'm here to make a couple of cocktails for you um, and then the, the team will make another couple as well. So if there's no questions and we're good to go, we'll just jump right in. So the first one, the first one I'm making is called Earl Williams. Um, and again, it's made with our spades sip here. So this is our first, I suppose, version or blend that we made. So this is a really fresh, really green blend. So again, has juniper, but also has cardamom, has parsley, has coriander, lemon myrtle, pepperberry, a lot of a native Australian elements as well to really give it a lot of, a lot of flavor and a bit of oomph. So I'm gonna make, make you uh, one here and then the team's gonna make small little batches for everyone to have a bit of a taste. So in this, what we do is we add 60 mils of our sapir. So this is our newly launched bottle, uh, which took a while to, to get made up, I tell you that much. The lid is actually a jigger on the inside. So you can use this as a measurer as well. So it makes it nice and handy if you want to have gin and tonics down the park. Okay. So the Earl component for this comes from Earl Grey. So we have an Earl Grey syrup that we make. Again, if we are talking about fresh and frag, we will kind of want something just to, just to balance out that. So a little bit of sweetness. But mainly what we want, we want those aromatics and those really light Earl Grey notes to come through just to give that the cardamom and the parsley in there, a bit of an uplift. So again, we're all about making flavorful drinks. So we don't want to create mocktails where you just feel like you're missing out. It's sugary, it's sweet, it doesn't really have any other flavors. So we wanted to come up with a, a bunch of products we could actually use and build in these different flavors so you can actually have what it tastes like a real drink. So to this, we have some elderflower syrup. We have some egg whites, just a little bit of dash. Lovely. So obviously we need lemon juice. If we're using egg white, you always need lemon juice to counteract the proteins. So what this does, as many of you may or may not know, creates this really nice foam. And so what you end up getting is you get this beautiful separation and really nice profile on the glass. You get a really creamy top of the um, creamy cocktail, um, and it really hits those all those senses you need. You have the sweetness, you have the the light botanicals, you have the creaminess. So give it a bit of a shake. You don't want to go too long. You don't need to go too long. So what we'll do? Grab two glasses here. And we'll do a double strain, just into the cube glasses. So you see we have some nice separation of the foam there. Really layered, nice and pretty. So this is modeled on something like a gin fizz, where you'd have a gin, the lemon juice, the egg white, but obviously it's missing the fizz. So to this, we'll just add a little bit of soda water just to get the top. So all we're doing there is just elevating the profile. So what you'll taste is the lucky people who get to taste these ones, is you should taste some creaminess you will taste the lemon for sure. What you'll also taste is you should get those really subtle tea, the sweet Earl Grey tea, which will counteract or which will work very well with the cardamom and the parsley, 
which is one of the main flavor profiles in the, um, in the non-alcoholic gin. So I'll let him, in case I pass these out, if you can give these to- Someone's going to yeah. do the, the, uh, the quality control. <laughs> and then we'll make up a big batch for everyone to try now. We always love feedback, whether it's positive or negative. And everything we've done, um, we've tried to be really open with in terms, we like to get people into the distillery to talk about our process and how we make things and engage with as many people as possible. So for us, um, yeah, not, oh, no, no, Tim, that's fine. It's alcoholic. You can take more of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I did want this kind of, uh, I didn't want this to be a lecture per se. I wanted it to be an open conversation. Obviously you folks have an interest in non-alcoholics. Um, and so feel free to ask any questions as we go. Hopefully get to answer them as much as you can. Sure. What do you think and why is yep. both and like the box or do you know, fresh or You can use fresh or, um, or prepared egg whites. Um, you can also use a thing called Wonder Foam. I think we have some here. If you can't be bothered to go and get egg whites, <laughs> so there's a little, there's a cocktail trick that most places have in the, um, within bars. So this little uh, additive here, it's tight. It's basically you put a few drops in, it foams up same chemical reaction. So if you are allergic to egg whites, for example, you can use that or you can use aquafaba as well. So that's the water from uh, chickpeas. So you can reserve that water, it has a lot of protein, which you release from chickpeas, which is when that interacts with the shaking and the lemons, you get that beautiful foam coming through. So you, it's, you can tweak the recipes for vegans or you can tweak it for whether you like egg whites or not. But it's a great question. Any- What are your thoughts? Gorgeous and luscious and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it used to be thoughts, Tim. It's not supposed to be that, not to fill their head with uh, actual words. <laughs> yeah, so for us, it's a, again, this is, the, both the cocktails that I'm making today are with our spades blend. So that is really, it's parsley, it's cardamom, it's juniper, um, and it has lemon myrtle as well in it. It has a really nice subtle balance. We do have two other blends uh, that we make. So we make a hearts blend, and we make a diamonds blend. So obviously we're a deck of cards theme, Brunswick Ace, so everything we do has that card element. So we are currently working on clubs as we speak and that'll hopefully be launched um, early next year when I can get time to, to make it. Alrighty, so while they're preparing the uh, that one, I'll move on to the second one. So this is called Rosemary's Love. So this is a really, a really simple, if you don't, um, a lot of time people are a little bit cautious about making complicated cocktails because they don't want to get it wrong. They feel like if they don't do it correctly, it's going to be they're missing. It's not a design how it's supposed to be taken or, or, or tasted. This is a lot simpler. This is just a bill cocktail. So there is some fancy stuff with it, but basically what it is, I, I grab a one of those. I'll grab a, just, just a jug's one. So I'm going to blend these in a the jug. So what we do, it's just a, it is a build cocktail, but what we do, we make it in a jug or a strainer first and then tip it into our nice, wonderful little uh, rocks glasses uh, for serving. So same process, what we're doing is 60 mils of our non-alcoholic gin, which we call Sapir. So I'm making two, so we'll just do double serves. So this blend also has lime in it. So with most cocktails, what you want to do, you want to balance out ingredients that are prominent in the drink as well as add in ingredients that complement it well. So for us, we're including lime, which is already in the blend, and, and rosemary syrup. So again, we just want a little bit of lime juice in there just to uplift a lot of those heavier, grassy, grassier, fresh notes that you get. Again, rosemary syrup. I said we're no shortage of rosemary around the place. So any old rosemary bush that you get is fine. <laughs> Sorry? What's the So it's basically, it's, you slowly heat or boil rosemary in water to extract out the rosemary flavor. Then you take out the rosemary itself and then you add equal amounts of sugar. 
and you slowly heat that up until it dissolves and becomes more, becomes more thick, more viscous. You can cook it for longer and so it gets a little more brown, more caramelly. For us, what we try to do is, and what we found with a lot of non alcohol cocktails is they put a lot of sugar in because when you take out the alcohol, you take away some of that weight that you get. So for us, we don't like to use a heck of a lot of sugary stuff in our cocktails, just so the flavors come out more. Um, but if you like it a bit sweeter, you can cook it for a bit longer and it becomes more toasty and you get more caramelly almost with that, still ro with that rosemary flavor as well. So you can really mix and match. And a lot of the time we wanted to make these things more approachable for people as well. Alrighty. So they've given me fire. So I am usually not allowed to play with fire in the bar because there have been a couple of instances, I won't name them, but a couple of times where some things have caught and cut. So they weren't aware of that. When I asked, can I want to get me, get me some fire? So that's on me. So what we're doing now is we're just, so we're igniting the rosemary and then we're putting a glass over the top of it. And all that's going to do is it's going to slowly let off not necessarily smoke, more like a steam just to fill the inside of the glass. It's tantamount, and you may be familiar with a lot of cocktails that have a rinse step. So you take an absinthe, you add a bit of absinthe to the glass, you rinse around, and you throw it away. It's just so you get that very fine coating of oil or flavor in the glass. This has the same effect. So again, it's not smoking, it's gone out, it's fine. It just gives a little bit more rosemary to it. So, yeah. Uh, Add these guys. So what we'll do, we'll just strain this into it. So this, we just top it up with a tonic water. So really all we're doing is just Rosemary syrup, a bit of lime juice, a bit of our spade to peer, just top with tonic. And the bitterness from the tonic actually plays very well with the sweetness from the rosemary syrup, but it doesn't overpower it. So now to garnish, all we do is we take some rosemary sprig. We just wake it up like you do with mint, just a slap on the side there. Pop it down there, it falls in, it's fine. Alrighty. So I get Tim to deliver these if people, lucky people, want to taste these. I think we're going to send around the estate yes. fizz as well. Um, oh, sure. Thank you. All righty. Um, so again, this is made, both these cocktails are made using the spades blend. This juniper, cardamom, coriander, really that fresh, that really fresh, gardeny, earthy, savory uh, style. The hearts blend we make, um, that's more of a spice. So we have uh, cinnamon, star anise, um, uh, a lot of star anise, uh, juniper. So it's really like that really great winter warming cocktail. Uh, the diamonds, which the team will be making a cocktail shortly. Um, this is our newest blend. Um, and again, it's more of a lighter citrus style. So it has desert lime, mandarin, sage, um, a little bit, and obviously, obviously juniper as well, to give that really light, fresh citrus style. So the team will be making some cocktails shortly with that after this has been passed around. So when you say that you don't uh, just build all the ice, yep. you just yeah, yeah. So the uh, the rosemary flaming is somewhat unnecessary, but it's a nice little theatrical process that we like. Uh, so if, if you're at home, all you have to do is just build on ice like you would normally. So it's ice, uh, our spades, our mixes, give it a bit of a stir, and then add your tonic, and then you're good to go. So it's a really, hopefully you should get it soon. And what you'll probably be able to taste is hopefully you get the rosemary hit for sure from the, from the syrup, but you get that little bit lighter style as well. So as that lime kind of lifts up everything, and then you get that cardamom coming through, and the uh, and the juniper from which is actually from the uh, the non-alcoholic drink. 
So for us, when we, when we make these cocktails, we like to layer in different flavors. When you try to use a sapir, yep. is it like to represent gin? Yeah, yeah. So our sapir is the term we um, that we've used, that we come up with for instead of non-alcoholic gin. So the sapir is what we call our non-alcoholic gin. So you can, if for example you find another non-alcoholic gin that you like, because there are quite a few out there now, the same kind of applies. Uh, again, the juniper, it's juniper driven. This is a much more fresh and fragrant non-alcoholic gin, so it holds up well to a little bit of sweetness and also a little bit of spice in the back palate. Does anyone, have any, anyone else have any other questions or queries? When can you source it? Is it only at No, we are, we're nationally arranged in Dan Murphy's now. So um, the, the, the spades appear is now ranged nationally, so in all 253 stores in Dan Murphy's. Um, we have a hearts version, which is available in half of the stores. Um, and the Diamonds was launched in July, and we're not ranged in Dan Murphy's as yet, but we do have an online website. We also have the buy, you can pop in and, and buy anything there as well. So we do also make gin as well, um, as made in Brunswick as well. But again, today the focus is of uh, Brunswick Aces non-alcoholic. So the gin bottle is a, is a champagne colored bottle, it's not to be confused with a non-alcoholic bottle. Uh, but you can get it from Dan Murphy's, and um, I think it's in One Republic, some Black House and Sparrows, but Dan Murphy's is probably your best bet if it's nice and local. But if you can't find it anywhere, just pop to the website and you can order, and we deliver nation nationwide as well. Yeah. Yep. What's your favourite drink? My favourite drink? Um, you'll have to come to the bar to taste it. Hint, hint, come along. Um, it's a, probably not a Royale. The team was started by five friends in, a, um, in a, a townhouse setting. And so there was a lady at number four in the setting and she was our nonna. And so she basically, she was the nonna for everyone in the actual, um, in the company. So we'll have a late night meeting. She'd come over and she'd bring us casserole. She's a very sweet old lady. So we've named the stills nonna for her. And so this, uh, this drink that we have called the Nonna Royale, which has our hearts, um, it has some cranberry syrup. It has a kefir lime syrup as well in it um, and pineapple juice. And it's a kind of sweeter, spicy, but really um, fragrant drink. So we have that on the menu. Um, and that is my absolute favorite because of Nonna and because it has a really beautiful balance between the sweetness um, and the botanicals that we put in ours. Yeah, please make it for it. Okay, so hopefully most of you have had a chance to, to taste at least one or both of them now. So everything is just to have gins. Yeah, so, so our, I was just saying a little bit before, but uh, before we started it, gins are a really good medium for this because all you need is just juniper and then you can layer in everything else you want. So for a normal gin distillery, you use juniper berries and you add some lemon peel, some yuzu, coriander, uh, angelic root, whatever you want to put in there. So for us, we wanted to make a non-alcoholic version of, of this because we could still distill using juniper berries but not have any alcohol. So everything you taste now is designed to be similar flavor profile as gin. So it has the juniper, has the lime, has the coriander. So our process is, is a little bit different with respect to most and all, gin, all distilleries, they effectively vaporize the alcohol solution gets passed through chambers, it goes through botanicals and gets eluded out. For us, we have the same process as that, we just don't have any alcohol in the starting solution. So we vaporize or boil our water, comes off as vapor, that gets pushed through pipes, it has a chamber, and in that chamber are our botanicals. So we distill all our botanicals individually. So we distill juniper, lime, cardamom, parsley, star anise, everything individually and then we blend it back to make a recipe so we have okay this is 50 percent uh, juniper 20 percent lime 10 percent star anise etc etc to make something that has the flavor profile of gin but we also control for seasonal variability as well so we know sometimes fruit is in as potent or punchy and so we can dial or change our recipes so we get a consistent product each time. So if we go to your bar, do yep. you have to more varieties? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, so uh, we don't, I don't think we have any vermouth on, on the menu that's non-alcoholic. So it's a completely non-alcoholic bar. 
Yeah, so we have so we have uh, beers, wines, and spirits as well. So there are producers in Australia who make a who make a, a whiskey. So Gospel Whiskey just released their non-alcoholic whiskey. So we have an non-alcoholic whiskey. Yeah, hundred percent. So we make cocktails with that. We make cocktails with other producers as well. Sorry. We serve a little bit. It's just really, it's just charcuterie boards um, and a, and a couple of uh, arancini and things like that. So it's really designed. The drinks are designed to, to shine with it, and so we have a little bit of food on the menu to help people um, kind of go through all of the, the menu per se. Alrighty. Any other questions? Feel free to shout about. Like I said, we want to make this as interactive and and, and fun as possible. Thank you guys so much for listening, paying attention. Um, really hope we see you down the bar someday. And um, if you're still interested in the non-alcoholic space and what we do, again, pop down. Uh, you can find all our information on the website. So feel free to email us with specific questions that you have. Um, and we're happy to answer everything that you guys have. So, oh, we have a question. Here. Yeah, no, we do. We serve little little tasting um, place. We have a charcuterie board. Uh, we do small things like fries and arancini and things like that. Just little tasting, just nibbles. Uh, we are located just near 400 grad. There's a lot of really good restaurants there. So we're not trying to compete with the restaurants. We just wanted a space to people to come and try a whole bunch of non-alcoholic stuff. Um, um, and then, no, the menu is 100% non-alcohol. Yeah, so we have a license to sell and make alcohol in the facility. But the bar itself is designed to be completely non-alcoholic. So you can get a gin and tonic if you ask the bar. It's off menu. But every single item on the menu is non-alcoholic. So we have about, I think we have about uh, 15 to 18 wines, 10 to 12 beers, uh, our products, as well as other non-alcoholic producers of spirits as well. Okay. I think these guys are tagging in now. This, uh, this recipe is using our most recent sapir called our diamonds. Um, as I mentioned, it has, it's really a citrus forward blend. So for this, the main, we have a uh, mandarin, lemon, angelica root, a little bit, adds a little bit of bitterness in there as well as sage. So what you'll be making now, I think it's Parisian so diamond. Parisian diamonds, like you've got the eyes here. And also, so we're doing two portions. So we're doubling the recipe. So we're doing 90 mils of the diamond. Yeah. So this is designed again. It has two elements. Non it has the non-alcoholic gin that Jack's pouring now, but also is topped up with a non-alcoholic sparkling as well. 40 mils of lemon juice. Yeah. So again, it's designed to be a real fresh cocktail. The sage will be pronounced in it. You get the lemon coming through. You also get that really nice, um, the bubbles from the sparkling. 30 ml sugar syrup. Mm -hmm. So when you make sugar syrup at home, because it's about $8 a bottle, you buy the 10 ml. Equal parts sugar. Equal parts sugar, equal parts water. <laughs> And you can experiment with that as well. So if you do like a particular flavor, okay, we're going to shake that with us. Yep. you can make sugar syrup in any flavor or combination you want. We make a, a kefir lime sugar syrup at the bar. We have a rosemary syrup. We have a sage syrup as well. We're showing later on. Yeah, so you put whatever you want in the water component. So you say I hate 500 mils, 100 mils of water, for example. You add whatever botanicals you like in it. So you can add some chili, you can add some rosemary, sage, orange peel, whatever you like. That'll, the heat will pull out the flavor and then the, the equal amounts of sugar is designed just to thicken it up and to carry a little bit of sweetness and, and that imparts obviously the spices or the botanicals you put in as well. Okay, because we're making more than one, we're going to go backwards and forwards because we want equal amounts. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, your customers might be unhappy. You should, it's always the case. You're like, oh. This is the second person that I'm going to 
So then grab the strainer jar. When you finish tapping, you can grab the strainer. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And just, 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 just rub it out. I thought it was going to come out. Okay. Uh, the shampoo. Just, 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 yeah, keep going. 30, 60, 90, beautiful. Oh, your, your, your paws are way off. <laughs> Lovely. So our next um, uh, non-alcoholic cocktail is going to be the Sage Advice. Uh, we're using here the spades again. So we've got 30 ml of the spades for free. It's filled over ice, so that's the recipe. 15 ml of sage syrup. So again, don't be... Don't be afraid to add more of the flavor. So if you find a, a bottle of alcohol that you like and has a, a la lavender flavor in it or a sage flavor in it, don't be afraid to, to amplify or up that a little bit. So it's not about counteracting. It's about adding particular mixes that complement it. So the lemon juice will act with the sage syrup to give it more vibrancy as well. And you then have the sage that's currently in the, the sapir to really come through um, and really balance it a lot more. Sorry, it's uh, fresh lemon juice. So a lot of lemon juice you have is effectively clarified that you buy in a supermarket. Um, it's, it removes all the pulp. The, the lemon juice we have here is freshly squeezed. So you get that pulp, you get that mass in it, gives a bit of cloudiness to it. Once you squeeze it, how yep. long With fresh lemon, it's, it's unfortunate. It's probably only good for about four or five days. Um, so for the bar, we obviously we do our prep on a Wednesday. And then by Saturday, most of our lemon juice is gone by then. Um, so if you can, if you can make it up fresh every time, um, again, a lot of the lemon juice you buy from the supermarket, it's, it loses a little bit of zest and zing. So you just might have to increase the amount you put in and then balance that with the, um, with the sugar syrup as well. So this is the finished product, garnished with a nice uh, sage leaf. The sage really brings it out again. Um, it just doubles down those flavors. And again, the bitterness really helps with the tonic water to bring everything through. All right, what do we think, folks? Nice, tasty. You get the, the sage. You have a bit of the bitterness come through from the, the non-alcoholic sapir. And it actually complements the sage well. So you have the sweetness in there. You have the lemon. So you have that zing. You also got that really... Uh, the mouth feels there from the sugar syrup, but it's a very nice balance. And then you, you get that bitterness from the angelica root, which is in our sapir. But that tiny quarter gives it a little bit more of a lift um, just to carry it through the back palate as well. So it's a fairly simple recipe to make at home. Again, the hardest thing about it is sugar syrup, um, but you can buy it, as Tim said, or you can just make it however, however you want to make it. Um, and you make a nice little cocktail with your friends. Something and it's not something you feel like you're missing out on. They're getting everything that you would typically make in a cocktail. All that effort, all that flavor comes through, um, and it's obviously just non alcoholic. And that is the only thing that's different about our products the flavors there, it's just the alcoholism. Okay, I think, I think we're just bringing around some of the French Parisian, I think. So again, this, this is a really nice cocktail to, have to make in larger batches as well. 
Uh, this one should be this uh, the top one. Should be the Parisian diamond. Yep. So this is our again. This is our take on. Uh, it's a, it's like an estate fizz, but again larger format. So you can make a cocktail jug of it. Um, you can make it yourself, or you can have in summer. It's really really nice to have outside. It's really refreshing. Um, non alcoholic. You get the flavour in as well. Poor Jack. Do you give other recipes that try to have other products like fishing the spirits? Yeah, so we um so at, at the bar we and on the website I think um if you go to the website we have a, a list of uh recommended recipes as well for our products as well as some others on there. So we try to include what we're currently stocking at the bar and making it the bar on that updated email. So you come into the bar one night, you have a cocktail, you really like it, you go, you look at the recipe, you can see what's in it, and then you can purchase it with us or you can go to, go to a store and buy everything you need to make your cocktail at home. Yep. We do. Like we, we, we find for us, we try to develop something that's approachable for everyone. And so sharing the recipe is a good way to do that. People can see what's in it. People can see it's actually really easy to make nice and high quality tasting drinks. Um, from um, and then obviously there's no point making complicated recipes otherwise people won't necessarily follow it so so most of the cocktails we make are fairly easy um, but again we just let the flavor shine through all right so again thank you very very much for coming along today um, we hope you've uh, found it informative and learned a little bit like I said uh, we are open as a bar on Friday and Saturday nights so feel free to pop in any time uh, we are also an active distillery as well. We do distillery tours every Saturday, the first Saturday of every month. So if you have any other questions, queries, or want to know just more about what we do and how we got started, uh, jump on the website. Like I said, my name is Cam. If you have any direct questions for myself, uh, on the, we have a pitchy kind of So we have, we go on the left, there is Stephen, my co-founder and business partner. And then we have two other uh, employees that work here as well, pretending to be extras for the photo, <laughs> as you do. Um, again, so pop in, drop us a line, let us know if you want to have a chat about anything because um, we're always happy and open to have discussions like this around people who are, again, interested in, in what we do. So thank you very much for your time, guys. Is this a bit where we're supposed to say to you that between the five of you, it was a scientist and an engineer and... Oh, you had all these different skills. Yes, I mean, and, I mean. And also, that still was made by you. Yes, yeah, so. Your engineers. Yeah, so that uh, that still you can, you can kind of see in the back. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, they, So um, for any out distillery, our stills are custom made. Like I said, their process is unique. Uh, a lot of other gin distillery or non-alcohol distilleries, they they make gin, but then they heat off the alcohol, and that's a, that's a fine, that's an okay way to do it. But what we found, what we find is. When you heat off the alcohol, you lose some of the flavor as well. And for us, we're about making sure there's enough flavor in there. So our process, like I described, doesn't have any alcohol in there at all. And so we had to design a new set of equipment that would actually allow us to make this. So our stills that you'll hopefully see when you pop into the distillery, they're all custom made. Um, they're made by myself and Steve, the guy on the left there. Um, again, the crew itself, we started as five people. Um, there's a, I'm a... Neuroscientist by, uh, by trade, I should say. Steve's an engineer. We had an accountant. We had a business manager and we had an entrepreneur in the group. And so basically <laughs> the five of us managed to somehow find each other and start something um, which is still hopefully surviving to this day, which is something we're very, very proud of. So um, again, happy to talk a year off at length about our process and how we started. So feel free to drop me a line or come into the bar and have a chat. Thank you. Very welcome, guys. Thank you.